promote entrepreneurship and financial investment in Zimbabwe. Uh, we want to look at this conversation as pragmatically as possible because we want to harness entrepreneurship and financial investment so that we can advance and it's not just the advancement of a few it's the collective advancement of Zimbabweans of young people recognizing opportunities and being able to actually harness them profitably uh, it's the magic behind the invention of uh, new product services industries and continuous improvement of existing ones this is how entrepreneurship has been described and entrepreneurship has been creating jobs for citizens improving the lives and standards of the populace increasing government revenue and prevalence of peace in many nations but entrepreneurship activity uh, differs across nations regions and continents and today we want to focus on what's happening in Zimbabwe to have this conversation I am uh, very excited to be joined in the studio uh, by my guests I'm joined by Mark Wasp he's a business consultant with Austin uh, Morris Association Africa good evening Mark, and thanks so much for joining us Good evening, Romy. Lovely to be here. Thank Fantastic. Great stuff. And we're also joined by Jerry Monya Zungu. He is a business consultant, a trainer, an entrepreneur, and a chartered vendor. Good evening, Jerry. Thanks so much for joining us. Good evening, Romy. Thank you for having me. Oh, wonderful. Okay, so we want to talk about something exciting about money, about entrepreneurship, and starting the conversation off, I'm going to throw this question um, to both of you. Um, let me start with you, Mark. Help us appreciate, when we talk about life investments, what are they and how do they work? So I think when you're looking at life investment and money and kind of wealth in, a, in its kind of in a holistic level, I think, um, when, you, when, you, when you look at something like that, it, you have to really look at it from the ground up, but you also have to, you have to look at it incredibly honestly. You have to look at it for yourself, where you are in your life, and then how to better that kind of situation. So I'm not talking about um, life investment just from the point of view of someone with lots and lots of money. I'm also t talking about it from the point of view as someone just starting out or someone trying to build themselves up trying to build their own kind of sense of self sense of wealth sense of purpose and also someone that's made it already there's very there's two very kind of big differences between the two but and as on a simplistic level there there's a there's a very honest look that one needs to take from themselves to then be able to either start saving or start working towards something or to start building their own business and if one isn't completely honest with where you are and who you are it's then very difficult to start something regardless of what it is whether it be savings whether it be entrepreneurship whether it be a business but you just have to take a very very clear look at where you are and then progress slowly into where you want to be and I think that's a that's something very very important that people need to look at from from their own kind of personal standpoints so, so is there room for optimism in that, <laughs> in that you yeah. know because uh, what if I write myself off or what if I'm looking at myself with you know using the wrong lenses how yes. do I get the clear picture that you're talking about well I think that then also well it comes down to yourself it comes down to also who you surround yourself with and it also comes down to the the way you think and I, and I and I know that it that could come from um, an, an easy kind of almost privileged perspective but it it needs to it needs to be it needs to be harnessed and it needs to be helped and that that means that you need to surround yourself with the right people and with the right people with the right intentions and it is a difficult thing because I get this asked quite a lot like well what happens if I am if I am quite destitute and I'm in the wrong place at the wrong time with the wrong people all of those kind of things and that's where it, it is difficult and we do and we do sit with those difficulties especially on on this continent and in this continent and in the countries that we live and work but the it, 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 it does it takes a special person to look at themselves very honestly and go you know what I know I'm here but how can I make it better 
best for me and the people around me. And that's really, I think, what we're trying to achieve as, as human beings, in my, in my opinion, but also in terms of wealth, because when you plan and when you look at your wealth and when you try and grow your wealth from a very honest level, wealth gives you choices. It gives you different choices. So if you're able to plan and you're able to either save or build up, you're, you're able then to kind of to, to choose differently, if that makes sense. You're able to gather different perspectives and then you're actually able to choose which avenues you, you go down and which avenues you actually go into. And you see, you, you, you see this happening quite often where people with quite a lot of wealth or whatever, they, they make choices, but for the wrong reasons. And it's a very it's a very difficult conversation to have, but I think one that people need to start having because you ha we have to bring honesty into this into the room of kind of wealth management, accountability. All of these things need to be tied together because to to get people really working together on one page, we need to all start having these discussions honestly and openly. I think, especially in 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 Southern Africa, where where we all come from and work and love and and live you know absolutely jerry you how do you see it you know uh, life investments how does it all work i like what mark had to say that you have to be honest with yourself and you know sort of say this is my situation <laughs> but you know some say to be wealthy you've got to project a yeah. certain image how do you <laughs> see it yeah I, I think i agree with him uh, to a certain extent because uh, I think I attended the certain event last week and uh, Arthur Marara was actually presenting and he said something which was profound. He said if you sacrifice maybe watching DSTV, paying your $75 a month, he actually said for the last five years he hasn't watched his, uh, DSTV, but he was saving that money and he actually used that money to build his uh, mom a house. And congratulations to him because he said actually I think the mother is starting to stay there last week. So wow. it simply means that uh, what, what you are saying to say no, uh, as Africans, especially uh, myself coming from the ghetto, coming from the vendors, some vendors can say no, I don't think I've got something which I can invest or something which can, I can leave for my children. But we're saying if you serve, like these days we are living in the world of entertainment. We've got a lot of entertainment. You see someone can subscribe on uh, uh, DSTV, someone can subscribe Netflix, someone is buying bundles for their phone, streaming, everything. But we're saying if you do a little bit of savings, $25, $30, like a bag of cement is how much? Like you're spending maybe a nice $75, for example, for, for you for on DSTV, but uh, probably you can actually buy maybe 10 bags of cement. And you can start maybe to build something which is going to give you money later. So it's not only for the people who can afford to have extras, but we're saying people can easily invest into something from where they are, where they're selling sweets in Glenview, where they're selling, ban they're selling bananas in Zaraseko, uh, where they're in Bulawayo, in, in Mpompoma. You can start uh, saving, you can start put money aside in order for you to win you can because like people right, like right now in our economy we are li most of the people are in the informal sector mm -hmm. most of the people they don't even even those who are working right now i think there's no patient to actually expect mm -hmm. so you need to start uh giving yourself to start now investing into something small and who knows uh, after you can actually be someone else so everyone can start uh doing life investment mm. so it's not it's not the preserve for for for, for an elite few uh, and particularly you know when you look at it you know i, I want jerry to, to make it quite contextual in the zimbabwean context mm -hmm. you know what is entrepreneurship and is the definition different from <laughs> what it is world over or maybe somewhere else within the region okay to, to me, is uh, an entrepreneur is someone with a vision, and then it starts to actually orchestrate that vision, maybe with a team, uh, in order for them to get money and actually employ some other people. So a definition of, and someone is going to, uh, it's, it's a lot of risk in entrepreneurship. Like you see all these business owners, some of them top business owners, they're always under stress. People, they think entrepreneurship is easy. So like, if you want money, maybe if I employ it somewhere right now, and you're thinking that if you get into entrepreneurship, you are actually going to have a lot of money uh, if you think twice. Because uh, there's a lot of, uh, there are going to be a lot of risk, a lot of mistakes which you can make. 
sometimes you get into wrong deals wrong partnerships every day you are having stress you, sometimes you are leaving your five to eight job because you're saying no i'm not going to liberate myself or be working for myself but you're going to find out that in entrepreneurship you're going to work 24 hours because your dreams will be about your work everything which you're doing even if we are at a wedding if at a funeral you're saying let us bury this person we need to go back to work because you're consumed into it so entrepreneurship is so something which is easy but we're saying in our zimbabwean context like uh, yes entrepreneurs i i believe there's someone with a vision then someone now brings people who can help him to can help him actually to achieve that vision like for example if i've got a vision maybe i'm saying I need to eradicate unemployment like personally i i believe that uh, i've got whatever it takes i need maybe to employ five thousand youths i need to provide employment for my for my people not only in zimbabwe but in africa we've started also doing that in zambia but i'm saying if it's my vision i need to bring a team now and maybe i'm bringing an accountant i'm bringing a sales person i'm bringing a marketing person those people now they are going to help me in achieving that vision those entrepreneurs also because uh, you need like personally i believe in recruiting and teaming up with other entrepreneurs so that uh, those are not eight to five guys like even uh, in my office right now people are still working that's entrepreneurship mm -hmm. it's no longer about i'm working my eight to five get my salary then i'll leave yeah it's a little bit extra and you're scaring people away <laughs> that's the truth people they don't know what the problem will be people they want to act out as if uh, things are rosy like every day i tell you mm. there's uh it's, it's you cannot spend a, a month is if you're an entrepreneur you're a business leader a month without getting a lot of maybe stress uh, you are stressed there's something which is not working out even for billionaires just imagine like if you look at your max zuckerberg i think he lost about uh, more than 20 billion one day so just imagine the stress every entrepreneurship that's what it is but people now we are we, we only see people driving their ferraris uh driving their lamborghinis i think there's a local businessman who actually just fell recently but he's doing yes, very I, I, well i saw that yeah, he's he doing very it. well it, it happens because when, when he was asked what happened he had worked for about two or two weeks without resting mm. Mm. Wow. so that's what entrepreneurship is unfortunately our young people they're thinking that if i'm going to own a business tomorrow i'll be rich sometimes it's going to take you five years sometimes it's going to take you 10 years sometimes it's going to take even 20 years and so, so Mark, you, you you coming in, is, is that the honesty that you're talking about? And now I want to hear from your perspective. I mean, you are an international business consultant. You operate outside of the jurisdiction of, of, of Zimbabwe. And maybe you have a different view. Um, help us appreciate the state of entrepreneurship in the region and beyond. Yeah, look, I, I, I agree. I actually agree wholeheartedly with Jerry. When when it comes to entrepreneurship and I and I look at even my my business as that because and I have I have clients and I have um, all around the world so I am working 24 hours a day mm. and that is what I think people need to get their their head around so I, I've been I've been told and, and and a person that I've worked with very closely for a very long time my mentor actually he used to tell me that um, this is his definition of a job and his je definition of a job is just over broke <laughs> because yeah because you're working from you're working an eight to five That's job true. you're relying on your salary and you're not thinking outside the yeah. box mm. and this I think is what Jerry is really hitting the nail on the head with um, if I take it back just to my life and just to just to things that I've picked up and tried to learn from and I'll, I'll never forget um, my granddad used to tell me he said mark if you want to be successful there's a few things you need to do and he told me he told me one I mean this is just um, as we're going on with this conversation but mm. he said he used to tell me never ever buy a car unless you're gonna buy it cash because it's depreciating asset it doesn't work for you it only gets worse and worse and worse so that's the one thing but then he also said to me which I'll never forget um, he said to me mark when you start and you start in life try your best to have more than one stream of income yeah. make sure you have two or three because you also never know when something's going to happen mm -hmm. and this is the this is the great thing and it, yes it is it is difficult to start something it always is and as Jerry said there's going to be times when you fail there's going to be times when you have to look at yourself and you have to ask questions and you have to think what am I doing this for now that is when I think it's very very important to 
set yourself goals, but in the beginning, small little goals that you can try and achieve and attain. Mm. And then from there, you start building. And yes, you're, gonna, you're going to 100% have stumbling blocks along the way. And there's going to be difficulties and you're going to fail. But the entrepreneurs and the people that make it, when they fall and when they fail, they first look at themselves and say what they did wrong, but they get up and they try it again. And it makes a huge difference. And particularly in an environment like this where there is a lot of struggle and there is a lot of strife and there are going to be times of doubt and times of, like Jerry said, you, you might lose a few things, you might lose a few dollars, you might make the wrong decisions. But if you give up, that's when, that's when you lose. And another thing that Jerry said, which is incredibly important, is you need to surround yourself mm -hmm. with the right people and people that you trust. Because if you're getting dragged down by certain people, or if they're not adding value to what you're trying to do in the world, what you're trying to give to other people, you really need to rethink. And it, come, it becomes hard. It really does become hard when people that you've been around with for a while and maybe you're doing, starting to do well, then people get in to your circle that shouldn't quite be there because they're not adding value. They're actually trying to bring you down back towards a level where you don't want to be anymore. You really have to look very, very closely at yourself and then also at what you're trying to achieve. And that's where the honesty comes into it, where you have to be honest with yourself and honest with people around you because the more you grow, the more you learn, and then also the more you change. And you have to be willing to change, I think, in terms of trying to achieve whatever you set yourself out to achieve. It's, it's difficult lessons, but it's lessons that life continu continuously teaches you, which I think is wonderful. Mm. I heard you mention, um, you know, something about a mentor. Mm. Uh, mm. Also talked quite a lot. I mean, Jerry also mentioned the importance of having a team, the right people around you. Uh, let's talk a little bit more about that. Mm. The importance of a mentor. How do you pick one? And some you know, people might be shocked that Mark's got a mentor, mm. uh, you know. <laughs> so how does that work? Look, I think it's look sometimes you can you can also get lucky it's also about timing it's also about being in the right place at the right time but but you you actually find that if you put yourself out there and put yourself in situations and you ask questions and you ask for help that's one of the things i think a lot of people battle with is just taking away that kind of I don't know whether it's whether it's ego or what, whatever you just need to step back out of it and be willing to ask for help and when you ask the more questions you ask the more people are actually you see how willing people are actually there to help you and that's I think how you kind of start the process of finding a mentor or finding someone that can relate to you that you can work with work alongside with and then you build from there you learn little steps along the way, you pick up things, but the, the most amazing thing about it is you start understanding what you need to do for yourself and what works for you. That's the most important thing, I think. You start picking up little cues and little tidbits here and there of how to be successful, but you make and you start making that success your own. And then you really start coming into your own, like Jerry says, but then that's when you also find yourself being able to surround yourself with those right people because you know who you will work well with and who you won't work well with and I think that's very important because you, you it, it does it takes it takes a team it really does a team to grow a proper a proper business or a proper whatever you want to do in your life I mean you look at someone writing a book it's not just the guy with the pen and paper it then comes down to the editors it then comes down to who, whomever you do it if you write about I don't write books but I'm just using that as an example it really is important to figure out who you work with and who you work really well with and then take it from there I suppose mm. so, you know Jerry coming to you it, it seems there's a lot of personal mastery that's involved <laughs> And you have to take a, a deliberate effort to, to, to know and to learn yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, many people, the, in looking at the youths, or you know, they would say, oh, you know, we don't have work, we don't have any jobs to do, uh, and mastering a, a very fast-moving mind is difficult. Yeah, 
and there's so much to do for young people so how do we calm down and start to master ourselves and learn ourselves in the way that mark is is talking about yeah sometimes i'll uh, thank you so much i think sometimes yes you have to learn through other people like there are people who have walked through the journey like i still remember one of my mentors uh shout out to him uh, mr philip Matarenika. Uh, he just gave me i think three lessons which i'm still using up to now and uh, one of the lessons was jerry no matter what never fell in love with your employee that's dangerous <laughs> <laughs> profound uh, uh, okay. and i'm still <laughs> using it up to now yeah it was <laughs> <laughs> that's a good one so what <laughs> <laughs> yeah so and he said jerry when you want to build a good team uh, you need a, a strong HR. You need someone who can protect, uh, who can protect you from you. Like sometimes when the business is growing, I think there's time whereby you can actually be in the enemy of your own business. Like sometimes you can sympathize on someone who's supposed to be fired. Sometimes you can fire someone who doesn't have to be fired. Mm -hmm. So you need someone who's a strong HR. So all those now. So like what he was saying, you need someone who can guide you. And someone can even guide you without necessarily talking to them directly. Mm -hmm. Like I've got my, my virtual mentors, international level. I've never talked to them. But I t I, I'll tell you, Rumbi, there's someone who has actually inspired me to write this book. And his name is Grant Cardon. I've never talked to him. I hope that uh, next year or next year, but one uh, God allows, I'm going to attend his 10x conference. But he's the one who said, everyone can write a book. Mm -hmm. But I, there I am, I, I wrote this book. And this book actually, I think in terms of revenue, it has actually made more than $100,000. And That's I'm writing another US book. US dollars? Yeah, because he was talking about, uh, <laughs> yes, US dollars, because he was talking about various uh, streams of income. Absolutely. Right now, this book is now helping me. Uh, now even my kids, they, I can, I can, they can easily say, no, we need ice cream, then I can buy it from my, my book. And I'm even motivated to write another one right now. <laughs> Every day I'm now writing, because I now know that there's a motivation for doing that. So, but if someone who has motivated me, is someone who has mentored me from afar, reading his emails, reading his books, watching his videos, his seminars, and uh, here I am, I can actually say uh, it's because of him. Yeah. So you don't necessarily have to say, no, because Mark maybe is busy, but I've got, uh, I can follow Mark on, on LinkedIn, start to see what he's posting, start to, I can even live like I'm, I'm with him every day. Like for me, for me, Grand is like in my car when I'm listening to his audio. Mm -hmm. You see, so you need that. Sometimes the room is on the radio. Listen. Sometimes we need various. To me, I I believe in having a lot of mentors in different uh, areas. For example, if it's spiritual, you need a mentor. If it's physical fitness, you need a mentor. Sometimes with sales, marketing, I've got Gary V. What a what a guru in 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 marketing. So you need that when you want to follow investments, follow people like Mark. So that's what you need to do in your life. So for some, someone who will be in a ghetto and they say, how can I get to Tina Shemtaris? There's no way he's going to give me time. But you can start to follow on what he's posting. Uh, he's, also, he's, he's always posting on social media. You can start to follow, build some dots, and who knows? Sometimes you can be successful because what you are following. Hmm. Yeah. And it can also be your doom yeah. in, in the same breath, uh, really. Okay, um, motivation is something very important and that personal motivation and beyond um let's talk a little bit about motivation and how to uh, i ask this because I'm, I'm trying to just frame this question in the right way um mm. i attended a conference you know some time ago and the, the keynote speaker was saying you know we should move away from being um you know motivational speakers and inspirational speakers and be transformational or transformative speakers what but what do you think about that when it comes to motivation um, Ruby, it's a good question, um, but I think I think they should go hand in hand. If I'm if I'm honest with you, because one needs to be motivated, um, one needs to have goals, one needs to align that motivation and goals with things that are personal that you want to achieve. But the the other perspective that that you're bringing up um, is is also very important because we need to also kind of um, I'm, I'm also trying to trying to think of how to phrase this but we need to trans transfer what what was it that you said a transformative transformative, transformative. Yeah. we need we, it needs to be transformative because without without change 
and without accepting differences uh, wherever we are in the world or whatever we're doing, I don't think then we can actually properly align with each other and then understand what differences we do have and what differences we bring to the party. So I think in relation to both of those, I think we need to be motivated, but then we also, in in some respect, we need to be motivated to change as well. Because if, if we're not able to change our mindset or change the way we think or act in in particular situations or particular cultures, for an example, if you go into any kind of discussion then without an open mind and without being able to be transformative and without being able to think differently, I think then you're really missing a trick because if you're not able to do that and you're not able to listen to different points of view and different people, then you're absolutely gonna you're gonna miss out you're gonna miss out on growth you're gonna miss out on being able to work like jerry's saying work with different people all over the world because we all have different opinions we all grow up in different cultures we all grow up in different countries we come from different backgrounds we i mean look at jerry's story for example it's amazing i mean he comes from being a vendor to this to being the chartered vendor now where he's helping people grow it's it's exceptional in in my opinion but it takes um, a person to be able to transform, to be able to change, to be able to think outside the box, but also to think with different people and different people bring different elements to the table. And I think that really must align with motivation because if you're not motivated to change and motivated to learn like um, or, and motivated to be educated or educate yourself. I'm not talking about get a master's degree or an honors or go to university, but just educate yourself in what you're passionate about. That will then also align with your motivation because you, you're doing what you love. Educate yourself on what you love so that you can do it better and then monetize it as well if we come back to that. But then also that whole transformation aspect, you have to be willing to transform and change, especially in this world where everyone seems to be changing i mean people are changing from g genders or whatever you want to call that's a different topic I I go down there, but i'm not going to go there but it is it's a it's a transformative world at the moment yeah. and you yeah. have to be willing to accept different people's opinion i'm not saying you have to condone it or agree with it but you have to be willing to listen and talk about it and openly talk about it, I think. Mm. And I think that's what a lot of people are afraid to do. They're afraid to actually openly discuss things. They, they think that an opinion is right. They think that their opinion is right. And that's it. And I think that's the wrong way to look at life. We have to look at life openly and we have to open discussions in terms of life. So I think both are very important, mm -hmm. actually. Mm -hmm. Jerry, um, you know, I, okay, on, on the same point, but I want to talk to, to, the, to the youths particularly there's a dependency syndrome that is so bad where all of these people are just waiting for jerry to wake up and then you're going to come and bless me with all the money that you're working so hard to make but i don't want to do anything for myself what can we start to do to unseat some of the dependent youths yeah uh, thank you so much i think uh, there's a problem which uh, i i will i would rather blame it maybe on on how we're brought up or on how our education uh curriculum was actually set up because what i think rumbi is um uh our youth sometimes they think that if you don't go to university then uh, already you are now out there's no one is going to give you a chance because we were taught that when you're young you're supposed to pass after passing you get into the university you find a job then you become an executive or but things have changed like what mark was saying these days you can easily learn from anywhere like my car personally is a moving library i, I like even driving long journeys these days because i know that i can complete a book i can learn and i'm actually i've said to myself if i finish four books which were written maybe by donald trump gary v grant cardone probably with maybe one local book i've got a degree already so if i'm going to finish 52 books how many degrees have i acquired if I finish right now, instead of uh, focusing on those gossips, you see all these youths that the people are actually uh, following, uh, people are not going anywhere. They're busy laughing on WhatsApp. They're busy laughing on TikTok. 
Yeah, some people are not even funny. Are trying to be funny on, on, on TikTok. Why can't you start on the same platform? You can choose what to what 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 what, what, what you can follow. Like on, on the same tic, on the same TikTok, I will tell you. That I think uh, the better part of my Sunday, uh, I, I spend it actually on TikTok. <laughs> but learning from other people, like I was learning from a lot of people, were saying talking about sales. And I was I, I heard about. Uh, I think I wrote down about fifty five tips from TikTok. But there is a youth who is in Plainview, is busy laughing, jokes, they're busy comparing who has got a lot of money, this one and this one. They can even fight. I, 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 I belong, I, my team is Manchester United, we've bought uh, Ronaldo for 30 million. Do you even know how much 30 million dollars is? How do you own Manchester United in, in Plainview? <laughs> Rather own your... your, your, your sell your tomatoes own your tomatoes know how to sell your tomatoes how can you move from a vendor recently i've been asked by this other young man from kenya and he was saying no i've got a market but how can i grow my business and i say to him we shouldn't be on the same place like each and every year you must strive to say i'll set up, I'll set up another goal like that's what i did when i was a vendor i said to the people no in the next five years i won't be a vendor mm -hmm. In the next five years, I'm supposed to be somewhere. Even when I was doing vending, I was saying, no, I actually employed about four people as a vendor. So I'm also saying to a young person who is in Bahari there, instead of just thinking like um, our, maybe our mothers and fathers, some, some of them were selling vegetables since 1985 up to now. So we're saying change that mindset. How can you actually develop it into maybe a, a, a fruit and veg a, a shop? How can you develop it? It can be bigger. So that mindset must change. And you must quit thinking that going to school, that's the only way of attaining education. That was it way back. Not now. Right now, information is available. Right now, on radio, we're actually teaching you lectures right now. You should listen. Get your notebooks up. Yes. <laughs> and then sometimes when these DJs are talking, listen to, uh, uh, carefully. YouTube is there. Instagram is there. There's a lot of information these days. So sometimes I believe that schools very soon are going to be redundant because that's where we used to find education. Right now, if I want a book, I can find it from anywhere easily. Absolutely. So people must change their mindset start changing that narrative and don't wait for someone to change your life the problem is people they hate rejection people they hate being laughed at people they hate being criticized sometimes when i'm posting something like i, I think i can post something which is very controversial and people are like ah why are you posting this but two minutes after i'm getting a client who actually wants a speaking engagement i'm getting a client who wants business consultants that is the way of life so the biggest problem of people is they are obs it's obscurity no one knows what you are doing so if you want to be a vendor maybe someone is doing i've got that young man i think who does um uh, are they chickens i think rural in mondoro oh, it's right. not popular on twitter Terry, yeah. yes it's Quateri. very popular right now and right now i think is a is now if a quater is a business he's not shy about it about his hustle but our, our young people now are especially us in africa we are very shy we don't want to be like i was talking about my mentor 64 years old he posts 12 times on facebook but he's 64 years old he's a billionaire but someone who doesn't even have ten dollars is trying to post about their op about their business on social media so we should change that mm. Africa must think That's like what do Misan Nube from Zambia said. Ah, yeah. Okay. I, I like I like that trajectory, and it brings us into a very interesting realm where we now start to talk about financial literacy. Let's get into that a little bit, Mark. What's the importance of financial literacy to an entrepreneur, and sh you know, I suppose make a case for it. Mm. For an entrepreneur, I think look, financial literacy is incredibly important because you need to understand money. You need to understand how it works. Look, there's no getting away from it in our society. We live in a capitalist society. That is one of the things an entrepreneur or a person, I think in general, just needs to be honest about. We need to understand that no matter what happens, money talks. Okay, and it does, but it can also talk openly and honestly. It doesn't have to talk like Jerry saying on Twitter with pretending you have this or pretending you have that or trying to showboat. Money needs to talk honestly through you and with you. So if you're an entrepreneur, for example, starting off, 
and you and you need to understand a little bit more about what to do with your money that's where it comes in financial literacy you need to understand firstly what you need what you need to save what you need to spend and then you have to be properly honest about it and say this is how I'm going to do it because if you earn let's say to call it 200 200 dollars a month okay you need to break it down honestly and this is where the financial literacy comes into it you need to break it down honestly for yourself and you need to say as an op- entrepreneur as a business owner this is how much I earn so how much of that can I spend on whatever it is if it's uplifting the business if it's uplifting myself if it's buying a new piece of wood for the little shop that I have or whatever it is and you then you don't go out and spend fifty dollars of it on like DSTV or on a cell phone or whatever the case may be you have to arrange it properly and be honest with yourself that these are the most pertinent aspects of the business that I need to to focus on but then also at the same time I was thinking about this the other day let's say you earn two hundred dollars and every single month out of that two hundred dollars doesn't matter how much how old you are whatever the case may be you save 10% of that so that's $20 do that every month I don't care where you put it what you do with it save it put it under your pillow hide it under the bed hide it build dig under the tree that's where your safe is hide it there every single month you do that 10% 10% 10% what that develops and this is where financial literacy comes into it but it develops a habit and it develops a savings habit then when you're able to calculate the rest of your money this is where this other fifty dollars needs to go this is where this ten dollars needs to go to increase the business to increase your plan whatever kind of falls around with it then you start thinking about that then after let's say a year you've done it for 12 months you've now saved over those 12 months you've now saved 240 dollars all of a sudden you have 240 dollars then take forty dollars of that and invest it into something invest it into something that will grow or invest it into whatever um, then hopefully that forty dollars after two three months becomes forty five dollars but in the meantime over those three months you're still saving because you've developed a habit you've still saved twenty dollars over those three months so you've saved an extra sixty dollars now you've got two hundred and sixty dollars plus the forty dollars that you've put somewhere to grow that forty dollars is now forty five dollars okay then you've kind of you've developed a habit of investing you're either investing back into the vi- the business that forty dollars goes back into the business and that your business has grown now so you've you're creating another stream of income or you're putting it into someone that you hire for mm-hmm. example mm-hmm. and you can you pay them forty dollars to do a different job that you couldn't do mm-hmm. but it's growing and you're using it to grow then when you come more comfortable with that all the savings that you've got now you've got 260 dollars worth of savings this is when you think differently about it. you look okay now i've got 60 dollars i'm going to save that i'm a bit young i'm going to save that a little bit more aggressively and that 60 dollars unfortunately has gone down to 40 dollars mm. because you've taken a risk because mm. that happens in life but over those two months that that you've lost 20 dollars what have you done as well You've saved $40 because every single month you're saving that. So you've got that savings. Look, you've lost that $20. Unfortunately, that happens in life. But then over the course of the next two months, that $40 that you've saved aggressively actually is now grown to $58. So you've almost got back to the time that you've lost it. It's now back at $60. But over those two months, what have you done? You've saved another $40. Mm-hmm. So you've actually got a, a kitty of around about $350. Call it a maybe a little bit more saved, a little bit invested, but you're learning and you're creating these habits all the time. And these are good financial literacy habits. I'm not talking about a, a huge amount of money because we all know that lots of money makes lots more money it's easier to make money if you have money but that 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 also is a little bit it's a, it's it, it's not the truest thing in the world it's these good habits that create money and growth it's just doing small things all the time that's either going to better yourself better your business or better the money flow that you have and that's where financial literacy comes in you need to understand money and the power of money and how it works in terms of saving investing 
putting it into something else for your business, hiring someone, but making sure that it's working for you. And like they said on Friday when we did that seminar, and I can't remember if it was, because Arthur was at our seminar as well. And he was the one, I think it was him or Nigel, I can't remember, Dr. Nigel Janakira, who said, make money make sense. But you have to it's also... Slightly Dr. Janakira. Yes, yeah, I think it was. But the, the most important thing about that is, and you talk about financial literacy, you need to make it make sense for you. Because it's very easy to say, oh, money makes sense because... Of this and X, Y, and because this person said it and that person said it, it needs to make sense for you, and you need to understand how to use it to allow yourself or your little business to grow, and that's the most important thing. Everyone keeps aspiring to exactly what other people are saying. Like, well, let's aspire to build a a battery-powered car, like Elon Musk is doing. All these great changes around the world. We need to aspire to that. No, you don't. Elon Musk is doing that because he understands that and knows it. You need to understand and know your value and what you bring. That's what's very important. And from there, you need to start baby steps growing from what you know. Then expand. Then like what Jerry's saying is we do. We have this world. It's like a plethora of knowledge that we have all around us mm. at our fingertips. Mm. On on the phone when we're driving, listen to books that people have written. Listen to Rumbi talking every day. Learn <laughs> and pick up. You don't have to agree with everything mm. someone says, but listen and pick up one or two things every single day that will help you and help you grow. And that, is, and in terms of financial literacy, that's what it's about. It's about small little steps and understanding money in line with your goals and what you are trying to achieve. So yeah. it's very important. Absolutely. Um, now, Jerry, coming to you, we're fast running out of time, unfortunately. Um, sure, but yeah. uh, uh, someone comes here and they send a message and they say, um, is education an investment? Um, I've got a few dollars. Uh, if I've got a few dollars and I enroll myself at school to get qualifications, have I invested in myself? <laughs> yeah, thank you so much. I, I don't think so. No. I don't think so. Yeah, because uh, if you've got a, l a few dollars, you get into school. I think there are various ways of actually attaining education these days. People must now change the way of thinking. Like, uh, education is no longer attained at school only. Like, personally, I'm actually coaching sales. I've got a lot of, I've, even if seminars are uh, fully booked people coming for for sales but i tell you i never did sales i don't even have a certificate of sales but i understand because what is being taught mostly into school in schools is theory you need something which is practical unless if she's investing it maybe she wants to get you do baking she's going to do baking lessons then afterwards she'll be actually producing cakes that's better. But maybe when I just going to attain, get that black gown, you are kept and to get a funny degree which are never going to get a, a, a job. That that's it. Because people are young people also are going to universities for the sake of it. Some of them they are going to some doing other degrees which are yeah, okay. Can you actually find a job? No jobs which are actually looking for. So when you're thinking that no, if I get education, I'm going to find a job. That's why you see most of the Zimbabweans are very angry. Because most of them they are educated but they are they are getting a job then that job we are just earning one uh, hundred dollars uh, uh, maybe hundred dollars maybe 150 but you are expecting to be earning two thousand dollars because when in the university are thinking that is just after university you're going to be a ceo for a, this company the job office will be yes will be lining up but it's no longer like that mm -hmm. actually in employers are now looking for people who knows what they are doing rather than for, for people who actually We've got uh, wow, orders of degrees. Like if you ask any, like any candidate, they will just tell you that I'm a holder of a degree. But sometimes they are just holders without any knowledge. So people they are not now looking for people with practical knowledge. If you're a mechanic, you're supposed to know how to actually repair a car. If you're a salesperson, you're supposed to know how to sell and make money. If a marketer is supposed to know, I, I've had a lot of marketers, some of them with master's degrees, but they can't even run a marketing campaign, but they're educated. So I'm saying to this person, I think if you really want to invest this money, please just try to invest this money. If it was me, <laughs> I'll start a business. I will just buy my data bundles, get on YouTube, research on Google, then boom, I've got knowledge. Plug and play. Mark, do you share the same view? 
a, a little bit, but what Jerry spoke about um, in terms of if you're going to educate yourself in what you're doing and what you have a passion about and it furthers your growth, it f can further your career or it will further your options in terms of that, yes. I do think education is important regardless and I do think, but it's education in the right way. Like, like also Jerry saying, you can also, you can self, you can self teach and you can also, you can self educate, but you can surround yourself with people that you're able to learn from and then gather that practical experience. Because I, I do think it is right that a lot of people don't, they've got a lot of theoretical knowledge. A lot of people now have theoretical knowledge, but that the actual practical knowledge of how to do things, when to do things and how to do them correctly for the situation or whatever calls for, I, I think Jerry is right that, that it's lacking a little bit. Everyone does expect because I've got this Bachelor of Arts degree or this degree or whatever, I'm walking straight into something and it's not the case. You've got to almost be doing if you're going to get education, which I don't think is a bad thing, people do need to be educated. But at the same time, get yourself some practical, whatever it is, while you're doing it. Understand the world that we live in. Understand that practicality matters, that people that know how to do things and that have been doing it can help you as well. Whereas a degree isn't the be all and end all. It doesn't mean you know better than someone else that hasn't got a degree. I think that's it's a very fine line that a lot of people have. They say that, oh, but I've got this degree, so I must have this job over someone else. It doesn't mean that. It's very important. I still think it is very important. Um, I'm kind of on the on the fence as to say whether <laughs> it, you mustn't do it or must do it. I yeah. think that there's there's a careful balance that we need to figure out. And if you're getting education to further what you're doing, to bake better, to make huge cakes, to understand the fondants or how to squeeze those tubes or whatever to make the pretty pictures all over the place and make the cakes more worthy and better and then to grow your business absolutely do it but don't get education just because someone says you must do it because i want to be a degree holder you know i yes. think that opens up another can of worms yeah. for, for a different day i think it's a discussion <laughs> for a different day absolutely <laughs> oh unfortunately we fast run out of time um let me invite you both to give us your parting shot uh and closing remarks to all the people listening the entrepreneurs in practice the entrepreneurs in waiting and hiding how they can start to come out and blossom jerry you can go first Okay, thank you so much. Uh, I think uh, those entrepreneurs are out there. You need to 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 work very hard. The the economy is uh, difficult, but there's got a lot of opportunities. So there are a lot of opportunities in this world, and also start thinking of uh, not only Zimbabwe. I think we now have this. By we have what these borders, but I think they've been removed by technology because. I can easily search everything which is happening in the UK. Most of them here in Zimbabwe, I can do business with people in Kenya. I can do business with people in Ghana. So you might think outside the box, start targeting the the whole world. When you're doing a business or thinking of a business idea, start to think about one billion people in Africa. Start to think about another billion people in China. Start to think about another billion, close to billion people in India. So it's it's about us now trying to have a change of mindset. Uh, not thinking that uh, and also as entrepreneurs we must also I, I've noticed that is a big problem in terms of hiring we need to have people like what Mark was saying you need people who can actually follow our vision people who actually knows uh, that no we need to actually maybe we are prepared even to die for the vision like what actually Grand also says to say you need people who are willing to jump from the fourth floor to save the vision so we need that team people are saying no yes we might be earning 200 dollars today but if we work very hard in the next five years maybe we might be earning 20,000. those are the people who you who you want in your team you don't want people who actually who are looking for a job to end because they just want to end that time they don't care about where the vision is actually going so those people are also dangerous so to the entrepreneurs let us push uh, africa has got a lot of opportunities uh, not only Zimbabwe, Zambia, there are a lot of opportunities in Malawi, in South Africa. Let us start being innovative. And also maybe you can take ideas. 
uh, at international platforms uh, like maybe in UK, in Australia, bring them into Africa. That's what is needed. You just need an idea. Boom, we are in business. And there are also a lot of people, almost daily, you get someone who says, I've got $600, but Jerry, give me a business idea. If you don't have an idea, then you're not an entrepreneur. Because you need an idea for you to be in business. You need cash flow is king, not the cash. Mm -hmm. Like if you don't have cash flow, if you don't have uh, that flow of money which is coming into your business, then you don't have a business. So an idea, you don't have, a, you don't need capital, but you need an idea. If you give someone is, if you give a full one million dollars today, in the next six months they will be broke. If it lasts six months at all, um, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, Mark, coming to you, your closing remarks. Uh, you know, just a word, uh, recommendations, uh, cautionary tale yeah. to all the entrepreneurs in waiting and listening. Um, be prepared to fail because with failure, uh, but you have to be, you have to understand that when you fail, you need to learn from it. There has to be growth within your failure because when you start, when you start off, no matter where you are in the world or what you're doing in the world, you're going to make mistakes. Be honest, but own up and take account for that for that mistake or, or that, but keep on trying. Never, ever, ever give up and believe in your idea. Like Jerry's saying, if you have an idea, you need, but you also what you need is you need full belief behind those ideas. And then set yourself up with a great team, with great friends, with people you trust, and then slowly edge yourself forward. Do not think that something's going miraculous is going to happen overnight. It takes time, it takes practice, and it takes perseverance. But believe in yourself. Don't ever give up. And also, Africa is where it's at. The opportunities here on this continent are unbelievable. The people on this continent are wonderful. And there's people out there that want to help. Ask for help, reach out for help, and don't be scared. Try open up and express yourself. But have fun also while you do it, please. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> certainly. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for being our guest this evening, for taking a very personal walk, uh, you know, down your own uh, paths to success, your own entrepreneurial journeys, and sharing that with our listeners. I was speaking uh, there to Mark Wasp, who's a business consultant with Austin Morris Association Africa, as well as Jerry Monya Zungu. He's a business consultant, trainer, entrepreneur, and the chartered vendor. Gentlemen, thank you so, so much, Mark. Yeah. All the very best. Oh, safe travels when you head back. Thank and you. we hope that we can have you on the program again. Thank you very much, Wimby. Fantastic. And thank Jerry, you. as always, thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much. Fantastic. Welcome. Gentlemen, thank you so much. And if you do not make money after hearing these two gentlemen, there's something very wrong with you. The Exchange.